Dr. Jeremy Weiss here. I'm founder of InspiredInsider.com, where I talk with inspirational entrepreneurs and leaders and how they overcome big challenges in life and business. Today, I'm especially excited. We have Lori Morgan Ferrero, who's one of the legends of copywriting and direct response marketing. A little bit about Lori. She founded Red Hot Copy in 1999 and has become a world-renowned and award-winning copywriter. Lori's words have sold products in many industries, and she worked closely with big clients like Ali Brown, Mark Victor Hansen, who's co-author of Chicken Soup for the Soul series. She's worked with Agora Publishing, Glazer Kennedy Inner Circle, and I couldn't even include many, many more. This intro would go way too long. She educates entrepreneurs and copywriters how to shift from hype-filled sales copy to copy written with authenticity, trust, and rapport. I'm really excited to talk about this because you always have that debate of, is it too hype-filled? Is it not hype-filled enough? So I want to hear your opinions on that. And Lori has a popular course called the She Factor Copywriting Boot Camp that she will talk about and you should check out. Lori, thank you for joining me. Thanks, Jeremy. I'm so excited. I mean, even just our pre-interview banter, it, this is going to be so good. It's great. And I'm so excited to hear your big lessons learned, mistakes learned in the journey, successes. I always like to start with a fun fact that most people don't know about you. And you said there was something recent. You have a, a recent obsession. Can you? <laughs> what is that? I do. Um, if, if, if anyone's in my community, this isn't a secret. It's it's bizarrely all over my webpage, um, or all over my Facebook, rather. I, I am crazy about elephants and rescuing elephants. And it's so it's very strange. When I went on my first honeymoon, we actually went to Africa. Wow. And we were on a safari, and we were charged by an elephant. The, like a little baby elephant walked in front of the the jeep and this ele- the mama charged us and it was frightening because we're in a jeep and this thing's gigantic and I didn't fall in love with him then but then there was this elephant this year called Raju who was chained up and he had been in chains for 50 years and he cried when they released him and wow. I just got so this my heart just swelled for this guy and then I started learning that a lot of elephants are horribly mistreated and yeah. I didn't realize so it's just kind of become my my um obsession because they're so gentle i mean i know okay they kill people sometimes <laughs> but in general they're they're yeah. they're not aggressive they're gentle they're so smart they're matriarchal and i just have a, a heart connection with elephants yeah. now yeah and i want to get into the copywriting but uh, Kristen davis do you ever see her talks the she gives a talk about elephants like people i think it's elephants yeah like they take the tusks and there's like a big industry of them taking the tusks. Yeah, it's disgusting. Yeah, it's so, only elephants should have ivory. Yeah, <laughs> so, yeah. But so let me talk about the audience. I know you're an award-winning copywriter. I want you to give the audience something that they can do right now. And specifically about, let's talk about the hype-filled sales copy to copy with authenticity. What can people do to start to make that shift for themselves? Well, okay, here's the thing. Like, hype filled sales copy is like, to me, is like the testosterone, right? Like, the, the really in your face, war language, competitive, stomp the competition. And that's that kind of copy has been working for decades and decades. But now women are kind of coming into um, economic power and making a lot of decisions and, and uh, talking about what we want and what we don't want. Mm-hmm. And there's a like a softer relationship building connection that's necessary Mm -hmm. with copy so it's not like um with the hype filled copy it's not like you don't get rid of or i'm sorry with relationship building copy you still have good salesmanship you still want them to buy and you you put a little pressure on there and all that but it's more about the tone and the Mm -hmm. connection and uh, building rapport Mm-hmm. Much more so than just you know pushing the the psychological buttons. You've got to you got to lay a lot more groundwork now before you actually get your copy off the ground. Yeah, yeah. So what's an example? How can someone start to lay a little more ground and and do that for themselves? Well, this is I'm going to tell you my favorite concept, and that people who are listening and watching now, you can do it immediately. And it's going to sound super simple, and it is. It's the what I call the target concept, and you may know it as as an avatar, as a persona. It's about getting in 
to the skin of the person that you're talking to. But here's what where a lot of marketers make mistakes is they'll they get their target market range. And so it'll be a woman who's 35 to to 50. And that's that's like a 15 year difference. We go through lots of different right. stages. So what I suggest is that you pick a single person mm -hmm. and you create almost a character. I, I call it a target because you put your target in your market like and that. a target, so it sounds like a singular person, right? right? Instead of like a big mob of, of, of target marketing. And so I literally have a persona, a target that I write like my easing. I have a weekly easing, okay. co copywriting TNT, and I write it to Nikki Stanton, who is a 37 year old divorced mother of one who lives in a gated community and makes $170,000 a year. She has her own like webcam business. And she wants to travel to Italy with her daughter. She takes her daughter to dance lessons. She likes to jog. She likes bargains. So you get it like as deep in the psychographics as you can of a single person. Yeah. And it can, it can be a real person or like Nikki, she's completely uh, fictional. I made her up. She was a, a conglomeration of the people who were following me. Yeah. And and then, so I think of her, like I'm sitting, or like you and I are talking. I'm thinking I'm sitting across the desk talking to Nikki, so my copy sounds like a conversation. And that means that the person reading it later feels like I'm talking directly to them. Yeah. Does that make sense? That's super valuable. And, I, you know, until you say it, it doesn't hit home, but when I went to the Titans, I now remember because you're pointing it out, several of them go, I talked to my mother-in-law. You know, that's who they, they think of an individual person. And now that's kind of sinking in when you describe your, your target. So thanks for sharing that. Yeah, you're I, It's like I said, it sounds super simple, but when you really do it and just dig deep, it's, it makes your copy come to life because it is, you, you get the emotional kick because you're talking to like a real person. Mm -hmm. And it can be an ideal client too. It could be someone you've worked with before. You can imagine them if you have a hard time conjuring up. How'd you say, come up with that? I mean, because that's Nikki? very, 37, divorced, one kid. What were some of the, th how did you come up with some of those uh, characteristics? The, well, a lot of it was um, things that I saw in myself, to be perfectly honest, uh, and things that I valued because I wanted to attract people who were like me. Now, everyone's not like that, but but that was a place to start. And then I also just looked through the data of my customer list. And um, I this was before social media too, by the way. So Much uh, harder now, to do then. It was harder to do. So you had to really, you know, rely on a lot of um, asking questions, polls, surveys, stuff like that, which you still can do and they're very valuable. Um, it's, but like I said, before social media, so there, it just took... A lot of digging and also I have a journalism degree I don't know if you know that. yeah North Carolina yeah yes I'm wearing my you can't really tell North Carolina Tar Heels yeah <laughs> Tar Heels. <laughs> so I have a journalism degree and so I do I know a lot about research and um, with the internet it's so much easier than it used to be we used to use the uh, the SRDS the standard rates and data to, to find out information about magazines. You can look in magazines. You can actually do this now. This is another good tip. Yeah. You can you can go figure out like what kind of magazine your target would read. Like say mine I don't think she would she would probably read Cosmo, but she'd probably be more interested in, in like I don't know, a, a home home like magazine. Good housekeeping or something. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. And so you go through and you find the media kit or the advertising kit. It because they want to sell ads to their demographics. Oh, that's a good t yeah. Yeah, Love so they've that. they've done all this research for you, yeah. and it's free, and so you can go there and see they they can get real deep into who their who their market is, how much money they make, where they live. It's a lot of good stuff out there. That's a great tip. Yeah, they've done all the research. Yes. So, Lori, I want to dig into um, your early days, kind of how you got to where you are. Okay. You know, what was it like growing up? Who were some big influences for you? Well, growing up was, um, I moved 16 times before I got out of high school. Wow, really? Uh -huh. And it was, it, everyone says army brat, and that's part of the story, but the truth is my, my father used to work at, uh, he used to manage clothing factories, and he would get transferred and we would rent a house every year and the lease we the lease would be up in a year so we'd have to move and so i'd go to a new school and um it's tough 
It, it kind of was. I, it, I, I'm very adaptive as a result. You have so to it's be, not, yeah. Yeah. So I think it actually plays a lot to who I am today. And and then they got divorced, and then my mom married a military guy. Thank you. So then we got to move around even more. Oh wow! Yeah. So so I was a, a an only child for eight years. I was very self reliant. A real. I, I'm an introverted, believe it or not. I, although I can speak to a homeless person, a waitress, to a king. I can speak to anybody. And um, but I was. I am rather introverted. After a while, I need to shut the world need out. Need your own time. Exactly, exactly. So um, who inspired me, I would have to say, is my grandmother, my um, father's mother, Martha. And Martha was, I never met another woman like her. She just passed away a few years ago. Oh, but she sorry lived to, to hear that. She lived to 93. She was ready. She's like, don't feel bad. I'm so ready to be gone. <laughs> and she, she was tired, you know. It's just, it, But I, I loved her so much because she was truly... A, a, just a good-hearted woman. She was very religious, but she, um, as I got older, I didn't realize she also had this kind of like sly wit where she would put people down, <laughs> but <laughs> in a way that you wouldn't know. Like she'd be, she'd laugh about it at the same time, and she was just like she would cheat at cards. For example, when you're 93, you can do whatever you want. Let's be exactly. honest. Exactly. <laughs> it, but it's it's hard to explain her character, but she was genuinely just the purest person that I've that I've ever met and I always everyone loved to be around her and she always laughed and she the, the, here's the thing that I want to tell you she would always take a negative and make it into a positive no matter what like she would just she had a sense of humor that wouldn't die mm -hmm. and wouldn't go away in, in the worst of times and she had a you know she had a rough times lots of rough times and she just kept her sense of humor and that's really has been inspiring throughout mm -hmm my life so she had an optimism and sense of humor yeah. yeah yeah i think i was reading the it's called the blue zone people who are centurions who live to 100 and that was one of the main characteristics is they're cool. optimistic and have a good sense of humor so and i want to ask you about the i mean moving 16 times what do you what have you learned on how to adapt because you have to learn very quickly how to make new friends adapt to new new circumstances situations what have you learned from that time how did you adapt I'm a chameleon. <laughs> you know, I can fit in anywhere. And it's I'm hyper alert and hyper aware of what goes on around me. It's sort of like we have a we have a new dog. This is a little a little tangent, but it's the same. it's she's a cattle dog and I can see her like looking at she takes in everything. Nothing mm. gets past her. That's how I am. Like I take in everything and nothing gets past me. Um it used to be that I would soft like if there was stuff I didn't want to see, I would be like la 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 la. I don't want to. I don't want to hear about the negative. But now I take everything in, and like a three sixty, and and just because it all makes a difference in what's going on around you. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, I yeah. Feel like you I'm have to basically observe a lot. Yeah. So you can figure out basically kind of feel the situation out. Oh yeah, and I have another story for you. Okay, so. In high school, I actually went to the same high school for, for three years, which is great because that's a hard time. And I wasn't popular at first. What I did was I literally hung back and I watched the popular kids and I made note of how they acted, what they did, how they dressed, and I started mimicking them. And before you knew it, I was voted most confident in school. I was in mm. drama. I was in like the editor of my newspaper, the editor of my yearbook. And this is in a, like a school of 1,500 people. So it, it was that skill, being ob observant, yeah. that served me. And that's also, obviously, we're going to talk a little bit about it, but I'll bring it up now because that translates obviously directly to learning copywriting and a skill. So mm. tell me, before we transition to that, tell me about what, how did your career get started? Oh, well, um, it got started in, I have to give you a little backstory before yeah, I go ahead. Yeah. Launch. Okay. All right. I like so, the backstory. <laughs> okay. So let's take me back to North Carolina, right? When, um, yeah. when I graduated college, I have the journalism degree, yeah. but that's not what I wanted to do. I always wanted to be an actress. Really? Yeah, <laughs> I did. So do but people it, tell you you look like someone or, or oh, someone they do. famous? That's not why. Oh. It was because partly growing up, moving so much, I had a very rich fantasy world. And and 
I, I watched a lot of movies. I still do. I love passive entertainment. <laughs> I love Breaking Bad and crazy oh, about it. Oh, I love Breaking Bad. Yeah. Oh, yes. <laughs> and so I, I, um, I just lost my train of thought is what happened. So what you were saying uh, journalism and then it's oh. not really what you wanted to do. Acting. Exactly. So as soon as I graduate, not as soon, it was like a year after I graduated, I was like, um, I came to California with 300 bucks, my cat, whose name was Marvin Gaye, <laughs> and a futon. And, and I was, I lived with my mom's friend. So it wasn't like I lived on the streets or anything, but I came out here to be discovered. I was going to be an actress. And I, instead, I was a really great waitress. And tough. I, 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 I studied a lot of acting and stuff. Yeah, it was kind of tough, but you know, I was following my dream. It was okay. And then I married um, my first husband and had children. And then it was like, oh, this is what I want to do. I want to be a mom because mm -hmm. it was the best experience ever. It was so life changing. You're a dad, you know. Mm -hmm. It is. It's yeah. like it's incredible. So I have sons, and um, everything was great. I was a stay at home mom. And it was great till we got divorced. And then it, it was tough. It really was because I had to be, I would see my kids like two hours a day. And um, I was working in this corporate job, fetching coffee, you know, not, not getting respect. I was a, a, an executive assistant, not just a secretary. But uh, Sounds it, better. It does, yeah. but it wasn't. It sucked. And I also, you know, driving, I live in Los Angeles, so it's like 45 minutes each way, and ugh, it sucked. So at any rate, here's what happened. Uh, while I was in the office, the, the uh, other executive assistant had the TV on or the radio or whatever, and it, it was uh, the Columbine incident was going down. Oh, yeah. And so I'm listening to, and to what happened, and for those people who don't know, is a tragic, horrible school shooting with these these two uh, high school students who um, were were just lost, ended up killing themselves. And, and but as it's unfolding, right? While I'm at work and my kids are in school, and I'm like, oh my god, what if that were happening in Los Angeles? I need to get the hell out of corporate. I need to be able to be home with my kids. Need some flexibility. Yeah, yeah. exactly, exactly. And I'll tell you something else too, Jeremy. Like my my oldest son has has he's highly emotional. And I was warned when he was in preschool that if I couldn't be around him all the time, that he would disintegrate. That was the word he said. He'd disintegrate. Really? Yeah. So I, I had a lot of guilt about that, too. So my kids were, were needy, you know, to see. And, of course, I missed them like crazy. So two things happened that changed all this. Okay. Well, three things. First, the Columbine. Yeah. Then that was in 1999. I got married to uh, my Mr. Red Hot Copy, John Ferrero, who I <laughs> like my soulmate. I love, love, love that man. And my boss retired. So I, I didn't have a job anymore. Oh, dear. So what would I do? I figured out I was going to I have a writing background and I'm going to figure out how to make a living uh, somehow. And so that's where Red Hot Copy started being born. It was, I was I didn't know what copywriting was. I knew that I could write, I, so I started like doing press releases and you know freelance website stuff. How did you get your first clients? Well, I was kind of marketing myself as a virtual assistant that specialized in writing. Go ahead. So there was a, an assist a, a organization, and they would match clients up. And then I got a, cop, a, a client who wanted me to do copywriting. And this is when my whole life changed. His name is David. Thank you, David. So he wanted me to write 52 autoresponders for this MLM company that he had. And I was like, what? <laughs> what are those? <laughs> and so he showed me some, you know, like Dan Kennedy stuff, Gary Halbert stuff, and, and uh, the long sales letters. And I was, the stuff that I would never read online. I'm like, oh, please, who has time for that? And so when he started kind of, he could explain what he wanted me to do, but he couldn't really do it himself. But he, and he, he could send me to the right places, which was great. So I, um, I started poking around and, and looking at, you know, who's good. And John Carlton came up, Gary Halbert, Dan Kennedy. But the one that made me fall in love with copywriting was Gary Halbert, to be honest. I, his, his writing was so irreverent and off the wall and just in your face and I'm like I fell in love with it that's when I I wanted to be 
the best copywriter I could be. And I just just dove in, went to all kinds of events, started really studying, practicing, and um, you know, just just getting out there. What did and, you do to get better at that time? Well, you know, if you write a, a sales letter out by hand, you start to see the pattern. There's a very distinctive pattern in copywriting, and that's that's what I did. Mm -hmm. I started with that. I did. I took the AWAI course, but I I'm gonna say I'm sorry, I didn't. It's, that's not where I really got better. It it kind of reaffirmed that I was doing the right thing. Mm -hmm. And then um, it was literally deconstructing a lot of uh, the sales letters, going to events. There really weren't a lot of copywriting products out when I started building my business, that, which is why I created uh, my my first course, which is now off the market. Not because it's not good, but because I you know I've segued into to marketing more towards women and writing more emotional response copy. Mm -hmm. So what was a big turning point for you in your career? Well, the biggest turning point was, okay, I got into it. I'm all excited. I'm doing great. I'm making some bank. And um, then I started having live events. And the first live event I had the was a lot of women. I have men too, but, uh, you know, mostly women were coming to these events. And, and they pretty much all came up to me and said, you know, I just don't like that really like masculine writing. I, I, it doesn't hmm. speak to me. I won't read it. I won't buy from it. And I was, I, I was devastated, really, as, because I studied from the best of the best, right? Dan Kennedy, John Carlton, Gary Halbert. And that's what works. So that's what's been working. And so I even asked them all individually, like, Oh, I'm getting some pushback. What do I what do I do? And generally what I got was don't those are not your clients. They're not they're they're not going to buy from you. But they were my clients cuz they were at my event. Right, right. I mean, obviously they liked your writing enough to come to the event, right? Exactly. And I I think I do tend to put a natural um sort of rapport building into my copy that that over rides the the masculine bit mm -hmm. of it because when I read some of my old copy I think it's really good but some of it's like really embarrassing as far as you know marketing to women but it wasn't marketing What's to women something it was that, that people were considering masculine what was was there some kind of story <laughs> or something in there what? yes yeah yeah, there was. Um, I remember sending out an email for a webinar that I was on with um, Mike Fortin and Jason Potash and some other people. I was the only female. And my the, the subject line was, watch as copywriter massacres lame copy. And it was really, really <laughs> aggressive. Really intense, yeah. It was intense. And I got, I literally got, a, again, this is before social media. This is all email. Emails flooding in about, I don't want to see my ma my copy massacred. This is so harsh. Or it, it was just all this negativity. And I, I was John Carlton was my official mentor at that time. He he still is, but this is when I was in his like his group. And I was kind of limped to him and said, "Why why do they not like me? What's wrong?" And he said, "Well, if you're not pissing someone off, you're not trying hard enough." It was one thing. And the other thing he said is there's there are other word choices that you can use which is right on both counts so that was um that was a little it was a little bit of a harsh lesson but it also kind of filtered into okay what are the kinds of words that yeah. that women will respond to and men too trust me i don't just work it to women it, it's what works with women works with men too especially now that that people are more and more savvy with uh, and more and more connected yeah. men don't like to be yelled at either <laughs> do they um, in certain situations, but mostly okay, okay. not, you know, like if it's like an athletic type of thing, I picture like a coach, a constructive True. yelling, but right. most of the time I would agree. Yeah. I don't like being yelled at in general. Right. 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 Um, so what were some of the words, what are some of the words that, uh, Oh, the magic you, words. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> or well, should we it, wait till it, the end to tell them? No, oh, I'll, I'll oh, tell okay, you okay. that there's, there's truly not like a magic list. Uh, although so I can start are, using them with my wife, you know, like tell me some of the good good words. <laughs> it's really about the the construction. It's about the assembly of the words more than the actual words themselves. Although if you're if you're looking at um, really aggressive language versus a little like 
gentler language, it's going to be better. Okay, let me give you my my evolutionary model. Okay, yes. All right. So when I think about like masculine versus feminine copy, I go back to the cave people, the hunters and the gatherers. And so the, it, this is very oversimplified, but it's also really real because this is, is in our DNA. There's this program running in the back of our minds, whether we're aware of it or not. And it does influence our decisions. So, so if you have the men who are very single focused, they're going to, they want to go out and, you know, they're going to hunt, they're going to get things done and thank God for that because they, they, they get things done. Whereas women are, we are literally, our brains are different. And so we don't, we don't single focus. We have like 20, 30, hundreds of things going on at any given mm -hmm. time, even objects in the room, like, oh my gosh, okay, I need to, I need to move that candle. I need to do this. Right. And what time we have, it's this constant chatter so we have a lot going on and the reason we do is because we're like while the hunters are out uh, we are we're smaller and we have children to take care of and so we have to really be aware of our surroundings and take everything in and make a decision so we, we take we have a lot of in points of input for, of information and so how that affects in language is that rapport is incredibly important to us and and connection community communication is is really important whereas uh, with with men it's just it's much more direct and so <laughs> that's that's the evolutionary model and if you bring that to uh to today's like men and women and and how we communicate when the copy is very you know, like war mongering versus like massacring versus yeah, yeah, yeah versus um like hey girlfriend let's let's uh, do this and do that but that there's not like a magic word there are magic mm. words that will turn us off and those are the kind of you know the, the stop your competition the the um smash and crash and things like that yeah yeah i see that so what are some um after i guess that you said what's a, what was another big turning point for you so you discovered you know obviously that you needed um feminine i don't know if feminine voice is the right word but basically more com community and not as much like harsh uh voice what was another big yeah. turning point in your career was there a certain client or um someone that you learned from that really had a big influence? Um, a client who had a big influence. There's, there's so many of those. Let, let's see. A turning point, though. Is that what we want? A turning yeah, point? Yeah, a turning point. Well, I can tell you something that went horribly wrong. Okay, go ahead. <laughs> That's it a turning was, point. It kind of was. Yeah. It, it was. Um, I had a client who I adored and wanted to make everything perfect for him so much so that even when uh, I traveled to Reno with my husband for his business I was in the hotel room the entire time working on this on um, this sales letter and no matter what I would give him it wasn't quite right he couldn't say what he didn't like but he knew that that wasn't it <laughs> whatever I was giving him but he couldn't tell me what he wanted and so I was like pulling my hair out it was it was so frustrating. I was so stressed that my blood pressure went up like through the roof wow. and my, I just, I wasn't taking care of myself. I wasn't working out. I wasn't eating right. I was drinking too much. I was like not sleeping. It was so just horrific and I, I was a, a bundle of nerves all the time. So much so that I actually ended up being hospitalized Whoa. Um, for, for a couple of days. But really? It, yeah. It, it was the blood pressure. Um, it, it, I found scary. out. It's really scary. I didn't realize that I actually have high blood pressure in my family. <laughs> it's ter I, it's silly not to know that, but it, it just it didn't seem to ever affect Doesn't me. Doesn't come up, yeah. Until yeah, until I had this sort of stress, and once I had that on me, then then that's when I realized that I had to do things differently, and that you know, regardless of how badly I wanted to please a client, I had to put myself first, and that's. I've been doing that ever since, and that it, it's hard as, as that's a hard mom. to do. Actually, 
it's hard to do all period because you're probably that's probably ingrained in you that the way you act towards those situations how do you reverse that well it was scary enough you know it's like i see it, it scared the crap out of me so it and i i knew even as it was happening that like this isn't good there was a little voice in my head that was saying this isn't good you're not you know, and my husband and I, of course, were fighting because he wanted he, he felt I was giving too much. He was protective of me. Right. And so I I just I guess it's sort of like if someone has a heart attack or some sort of major thing, they're like, OK, time to change some things about my lifestyle. And mm-hmm. that's how that's how I was. Yeah. So, Lori, what are some of the most successful campaigns and what you did to make them effective? Well, I have to say that the She Factor Copywriting Boot Camp is probably, it's, it's my flagship. It's, yeah. it's definitely my most, my most famous product, if you will. Um, and the, the one that I love the most, it's, it's a conglomeration of everything that I am, everything that I've learned and taken and, and softened to, to a degree where it, it just, it really hits on a lot of levels. And I, it's funny, I'm going to confess. I've tried to, to move away from it and move more towards something because it, it men respond to it as well. And so I was like, I don't want to just be the she factor girl. I want to right. be, I want everyone to know that this works. So I tried to kind of inch away from it and go like, and it also works on men because it does. And I just, people just still see me as the she factor. And that's okay because we, we're ruling the world. So it's okay. It's true, I, I can, agree with that. Yeah, I can, um, I can handle it. But do you know that it also works on men? And um, what makes it so successful, I think, is that I the internet has changed so much in social media and and the way we connect that you taking the time to really know who your target your target is, who the people are that you're talking to, and you're literally conversing. I am with them on Facebook or I don't use Twitter as much, but there's, there's like the barriers kind of gone. So it, it just, I think it's time for something like this. And so people are, are looking around and embracing it because of that. So that I, I do a lot of the same marketing that I've done. It's through my own community, my own list, not very good at using affiliates. I should be better. <laughs> but, but when people, talk to me they're like oh that seems like something my community would be into as well and so when that word does spread when I'm organized enough to do it then that works too I've tried Facebook ads a little but yeah what was the best for you with with promoting it because you have like a you know especially you have a superpower where you know you're a copywriter and a, a very good copywriter so you could probably go on Facebook or go on Google ads or go wherever and write compelling copy. So where, what has worked the best for you as far as the, the route that people found it and then bought? It, truly social media. And it's, it's not any magic for it's, it's, it's not something I could even deconstruct. You know, there's some amazing social media teachers out there who can do that, but I just do it in, innately and yeah. just kind of um, just genuinely connect with people there. I mean, do you start and, a Facebook group or what, what kind of things yeah, do you do? I did actually, this is a little, it's an aside, but it's the Facebook group that I started is uh, on storytelling actually, which is another one of my passions because I, I love movies so much and it feels like storytelling is something that gets through where um, just a sales message won't because mm-hmm. it it's like we're, we're drawn in men and women right we're drawn into that so I, I created a, a Facebook group called the 30 day storytelling challenge challenge okay. 30 day storytelling challenge yeah you can look it up on Facebook it's free to join and I do it every quarter where I put up a photo every day okay and your job is to write a story like in 15 minutes you set a timer and you write for 15 minutes and and it's really about getting into the practice of it, and it's mm-hmm. it's it's fun. It's, it's challenging because thirty days of you know writing every day, but it's it's um, a good exercise. A great exercise. It's a great, and so we've built. It's it's a little you know it's growing. It's I think we're over five hundred people now, but nice. I'm hoping to grow it even more. I, I've also had. Well, what's is, it called? Where should people check it out? 
Well, go to Facebook and it's uh, slash 30 day storytelling challenge. Okay. Yeah. And um, yeah, like I said, it's, it's so free. And it's the fun. red hot chicken. The red hot chicken. Oh, yeah. That lives on. Here is my chicken. Here's my chicken. Let's see if I can show it. <laughs> so the red hot chicken also has a Facebook page. Um, called the red hot chicken so if you go to facebook.com forward slash the uh, in caps red hot chicken um, and so it's it's a kill it's silly right but it's a um it's a chicken timer but there's a whole backstory to it and i started using this as um, a promo tool for one of my copywriting is the speed copywriting workshop and i don't remember mid 2000s 2006 or 7 and but I'm a big believer in writing in chunks of time, like setting a timer and just going because it, it, it just works. You get interrupted and yeah. Right. And so I literally, I do 15 minutes at a time. That's my magic number. Some people can do it longer, some people less, but that's my magic number. And that's what I teach my, my students or encourage them to do. In fact, I just told, she's not a student, she's a colleague, but she's like, I can't get this writing project done. And I just said, set a timer. And she wrote back to me today, and she's like, it worked. Thank you. <laughs> so it really does. But okay, but back to the backstory of the chicken. So the only way you could get this chicken is to come to my event. They're not for sale or anything else. And so I, the backstory is this. There was a, a species of chicken called Chickenus timerus that were discovered by scientists off of an island in Hawaii called Quitsquaken. And they found that these chickens were um, were very very smart, very orderly. Uh, they they hated chaos. They liked they liked things to you know to get done. And the the best people to raise them were entrepreneurs. And so because of I would think it's the worst people to raise them. No, I'm just <laughs> I think the chickens raised. I would kill that. I would kill the chicken. Uh, <laughs> <No>. <laughs> so they. They, I was dispatched because of my lineage to Ralph Waldo Emerson to take care of these chickens and find homes for them, to place them. And Brad and Angelina were off the list because they already have too many of their own. And so they were not allowed to adopt. But anybody else who was an entrepreneur could. And so Dan Kennedy wrote up uh, my chicken in his newsletter. My chicken has its own movie. It's so cute. You have to check it out at, at on the Facebook thing at the Red Hot Chicken. Okay. It's, it's like I'm like, in all my research, I am surprised I didn't come across this. You didn't see the chicken. Yeah. I, that's okay. I, I sh that means I need to do a better job of connecting the chicken right. with, my, with my pages. So it's it's adorable. I, I have uh, songs, that not songs. Um, it's a uh, voiceover. I, ha I hired this guy to, to be the red hot chicken. <laughs> it's not really the red hot chicken. <laughs> but he, he sounds like those. It's like uh, Santa Claus. He's set right. He sounds like a, the Monty Python men when they do a woman's voice, like "Oh, the red hot chicken." <laughs> so cute. But anyway, it, it's I still use it today. I don't mean just the timer itself, but my boot camp that I just sold out that starts tomorrow. We they all get red hot chickens, and it's just a thing. It's gone on. It has a life of its own. It's, there's pictures of it all over the world in Australia, wow. Belgium. It gets around. So, cool. Lori, what in your boot camp do people say over and over, this is one of the best things that they got out of the boot camp? Because I'm well, sure it's gotten refined and gotten better throughout the years. Oh, it does. Every one is, is better than the last, for sure. And one of the things is the target, like I've already told you. Um, and another thing is the storytelling. Because when I first started teaching it, now storytelling is really, you know, everyone's jumping on the bandwagon. And that's fine. Uh, but... Back then, it was sort of like women require story yeah. because of that connection. Stories really cut the the time it takes to build a connection down. And they, they drop your sales resistance. Yeah. And so learning to tell a really good story is one of the things that yeah. they really like. And what are some ways that you suggest them that they can start to tell their own story better because it's not always an easy thing to do. I know, right? I mean, it's like a different language almost. Like you recognize it when you hear a good mm -hmm. one, but like being able to yeah. tell it. I'm asking is... selfishly because, you know, when I'm talking to people, I want to know how I can kind of draw their their best stories out. Oh, so, yeah. yeah. So what do you tell them when... Well, 
okay, there's a few different ways. Like one is, you know, the hero's journey, which Joseph Campbell's, um, his depiction of, you know, like how this guy gets from, you know, how he transforms, right? But the, the thing about the her- hero's journey, and um, movies are based on them, right? Like Star Wars, Wizard of Oz, you, Lord of the Rings, you right. name it, Harry Potter. And the hero's journey is about someone who's he's kind of a simple person. His life before is simple and then he goes through a transformation and then what his life is like now. So to me, to just to distill it down, because Joseph Campbell has a bunch of steps in between. Yeah. Just it it you're gonna lose people in marketing if you do that full on Sorry. Yeah, I mean, I've read it many times, and I still can't remember all of all the stuff. Yeah, <laughs> I know it's it's like a little um, a wheel. Yeah, it, basically, though, also Joseph Campbell has three main uh, headings, and that is the um, I don't remember what they are. <laughs> They're not in front of me, but I'll tell you what they are in marketing. Yeah, and that, yeah. yeah, in in marketing, I can never remember all those steps. I know, and you don't need to. Yeah. So it's sort of like a movie trailer. If you think of like you have your whole movie, but you have to make some decisions, like what are the highlights of it that you're going to put in your story? So if you think of that as like a movie trailer, and often there's a lot of different ways to to attack it, but the one that works like pretty much all the time that anybody can do is like the before I was like this, and then that happened, and now I'm like this. So like for me, like before... I was working in corporate and the Columbine thing happened and now I built a business so that's thriving. So those kinds of things, will, that'll always get you started. Like if you think of a specific event and, and you have to think of what the lesson is that you want them to know yeah. before, you, you, before you select the event. Yeah. Lori, at what point did you transition from, because you had clients early on that you were doing projects for, from clients that you had to your own products in services. Oh, it, was that a it, tough transition? Was it easy? It wasn't a transition. I've always done both. Oh, yeah. I still, okay. I still take clients. And when I actually, I made my first information product very early in my career. And it was because, like I told you, nobody really had a copywriting product. And so I just kind of deconstructed what I was figuring out for my client and made it into an information product. So I would have passive income. And I also, Tom Antion, I've got to give a shout out to him. He's the one who encouraged me to actually have an info product so you have something else. And so I've always, always had info products and I've always, um, uh, not always taught, but I love teaching. That's that's my most favorite part. Mm-hmm. And then I always have a client or two in the background. Got it. And so I want to hear about, obviously, you know, the, the boot camp's very successful. What's some um, things that, I don't want to say campaigns that didn't do well, but things that you had to tweak that you realized didn't do well. I know one of them was the masculine writing. Were there any other tweaks you had to make with your your copy or in your career that really kind of brought things to the next level for you? Yeah, I, you know, I agree with you. It's like you learn from everything. So even things that are like mistakes or failures, yeah. there's, there's still lessons in yeah. them. So I'm... A good lesson <laughs> learned lesson that... Learned. Um, you know, because we all make mistakes, and but obviously we learn from them. What were some big, big lessons big, that you learned? Yeah. Big lessons. I yeah. like that. I like that. Well, you know, I told you the one where I started taking care of myself. That was a good one. Uh, also, keeping regular office hours. Like I don't at like five o'clock at mm-hmm. night. We're done. Maybe six sometimes. But I used to stay up till like eleven or twelve. Just uh, just doing. There was always one more thing. And yeah, that's when you start making mistakes too. But but specifically, I remember a tweak. This wasn't. I, I guess this was more of a. Oh, I'll just tell you the story. Yeah, go ahead. <laughs> okay, so there's this this really high high level marketer that you would know that a lot of people know that uh, had me write a sales letter for him, and he's also. He, well, I'm not, I'm not going to give too many hints away because I don't want you to guess who he is. He'll know if he hears this. Anyway, he had me write this sales letter and he loved it, loved it. And then I didn't hear anything from him for, a, 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 I don't know how long, a few days, maybe a week or two. And then suddenly, he it turns out he ran that letter by a committee, which is my, I hate that. Because everybody has a different idea. 
and you can't make everybody in a group happy. So I like to deal with one person and, you know, it, at, at any rate. So he started listening to what these people were saying and they were totally gutting my letter. And it's not that it was like a personal thing. It was just like, first of all, I wrote it for you and you're the one who that I want to deal with. But second of all, you're giving me like two days to rewrite an entire sales letter without, you know, any any notice and that's when you need it. And so... Um, yeah. I actually, I, I, I didn't, I just said, I, that that's just completely, that's a brand new sales letter. It's not like re, it's not working within the bounds that yeah. we'd agreed on. Yeah. So I just couldn't do that. So what did they say? They it, understand it just, or? Yeah, he, he didn't, he wasn't happy. Your ground. I it's, stood it's, my ground. Yeah. He wasn't happy about it, but, uh, that's. I, I still feel like I did the right thing. I, I didn't feel yeah. like that was. What else is tough, Lori, about working with clients? You know, for a copywriter <laughs> listening to this, what should they be aware of? What have you found that's tough? That you've had to navigate the waters? Uh, there's so many things. There's so many things. Um, communication is is key. And I've ha- I have this really extensive discovery process where I have them go through and and put down so much information about their competition and who they are and what they do and how they got started. And I had one client say, wow, if I knew I had to write all this, I would have written the copy myself. (laughs) And I said, go ahead. (laughs) She didn't. She gave it back to me. So that's uh, one thing. And I'll tell you, this is, I learned this from John Carlton. And Mm -hmm. I actually um, have a post-it note, I don't now, but I had a post-it note up and I'm going to put it up again after we're done that said, always be the adult in the room. That's my favorite saying. It's just like they, clients will run you ragged because they, they're not sure what they want and they'll make you second guess yourself. If you have done your due diligence as a copywriter, as a marketer, if you, you know, built your skill level up, which I know I have, um, then you know, you, you have to be the one that says, no, look, just like I did with that marketer whose name I almost said by accident. <laughs> I mean, I didn't, uh, I, I, that was being the adult in the room and going, look, no, you can't just bring all your little kindergartner friends in here and, and rip apart the copy and expect something different magically in a day. Mm-hmm. That's not happening. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's hard to navigate that. Um, so on another note, Lori, I want to hear about some of your favorite headlines. Your personal ones, other ones from from copywriters, your mentors, or other copywriters that you know. Okay, well, um, my favorite of my headline is is uh, my mentoring program that's not happening right now, but it will again in in 2015. And it was, "Are you making a hundred thousand dollars or more with your copywriting?" Question. You should. And exclamation mark. And that was John Carlton approved, so I felt happy about that. I still look to him for approval. He's just he's the man. What can I say? And one of my favorite headlines happens to be John Carlton's "The One Legged Golfer" because, uh, and I'm not. It, that's not the headline. You know, it's actually it's, it's a long yeah. It's a long. People headline, can look it, it up if they want to see the one legged exactly. golfer headline is a exactly. famous headline. Except, but what I love about that one is yeah. that it's. It's a story in the headlines. It's curiosity provoking, and it's it's a and it's actually a real story. He didn't make it up, um, and a lot of people have tried to to model it, to swipe it, and like it, the one legged copywriter, or what are they? <laughs> yes, yes, like the one legged copywriter or the um, the one legged martial artist. It's, you know, it just it it doesn't always translate, especially because that was a true story, and. Some of those, you know, other ones weren't. But I, I love that. I also love Gary Halbert's stories about, um, you know, like what I, this is an example. But how he would put like a state or something like housewife in Iowa discovers something secret. So I have to tell you, okay, this is a little off color, but you'll like this. Go ahead. So one of my first clients was, um, in how would I say it, in. Not in it wasn't porn, but it was in um, the adult male and, industry. It wasn't the adult. I feel industry. like you're gonna like this, assuming male. Because like <laughs> I never talk about this. It was in it, male enhancement. Okay. Was, okay. Okay. And so I was like reading all of 
all of uh, you know the forums and things like that, what people were talking about. Uh, your but, husband's but, like, why is this stuff on your computer? No, I'm just, no, I'm no what's to... funny, this is what's really funny is I was writing it from the perspective of like I'm, you know, Molly, his girlfriend, and now that he's getting this, you know, enhancement, ooh, everything's wonderful. And then my husband copied or he mimicked, whatever, swiped a Gary Halbert uh, headline and it was something like, um, I used to be a, a poor farmer from Kansas, but now I'm working in the porn industry laying pipe or something like crazy. <laughs> The client loved that headline, and so that was the way we went. That's hilarious. Isn't that funny? So for your 100,000, your your headline um, for your mentoring, how did yeah. you come up with it? Because I'm sure it went through a lot of different iterations. Oh, yeah, it did. Because I, I tend to write headlines fat, uh, last. I don't write them fast. I write them last after I've got the rest of the, the feel and the tone. Oh, interesting. Of the do, do, is that common or not common for people that you talk to? I, everyone has their own. Uh, they fall on either side, so hmm. it's it can go either way. the The reason I started it that way, I didn't used to. I used to write beginning to end, you know, just not no stopping. But I would get so stuck on the headline that I couldn't get going. So I was like, I'll just come back to the headline. Interesting. And then I realized that sometimes the opening, yeah, is reflective of what the headline's going to be. Yeah. And so I wouldn't know that until I started writing the copy itself. Um, and so that's how I would, we go back. Um, and how did I come up with that one? I think I started just really getting in the shoes of when I started doing business and what I wanted out of a, out of a mentor and the kind of money that I, I you know, I didn't say like a million dollars because I, I feel like that's real unrealistic, first of all. And um, second of all, it just, it just felt right. <laughs> That's yeah. not the right answer. I, that was it. Was just getting very. I have a lot of empathy toward my community and toward what the pain is of being an entrepreneur, and uh, like I, I kind of tune in to it psychically. Woo! <laughs> and, and well, you work of, with some. Uh, I mean, you use the term kind of woo 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 clients. Yeah, I do. I do. I actually have a program also called the Conscious Copywriting Formula, which is like the she factor only a, a little even more like woo woo it's it's it uses more transformational language like the kind of stuff that you you're going to see in hay house and and stuff like that i was um not the in-house copywriter but i was a, a main copywriter for a company called evolving wisdom mm -hmm. and they you know like with ariel ford and claire zamed and and Neil Donald Walsh, a bunch of the the big woo woo people, <laughs> and and the way that they say things is the way they structure stuff is is a little different. Yeah. So, what are some of the common mistakes people make with their copywriting? The common mistakes. Yeah. Lots. One of them is it, I, even you have if a lot I of tell students. you, yeah, I do. I'm going to tell you, but you're still probably not going to do it. You're right. Because you're right. My students yeah. won't, but I'm going to tell you. Read your copy out loud. People like will they'll think words are in there that aren't in there, and or it it won't sound as conversational when you actually read it out loud. Like where you should break up sentences because you know copywriting is not English class at all. You you're gonna break all the English rules. You're gonna start sentences with prepositions, and um, there's a lot of languaging that can be shortened like. Um, oh, what's an example? One is like utilize versus use. Like you can use utilize, but most of the time use is okay. <laughs> so is so this painful for you since you have a journalism background and you kind of learn probably the proper way to do things? No, it's it not. was. It was. It, it was freeing. It was freeing. And I think that you hit on something. I think that's one of the reasons why I fell in love with it because it's such a all the rules get thrown out the window. You don't have to be so rigid. You don't have to follow the AP style book and just hmm. start it like this. And it, it's just free flowing. Yeah. And I'm a free flowing kind of gal. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, you know, Lori, since this is Inspired Insider, you know, I asked this question, you know, tell me about the lowest point in your life and business and then what you did and what you thought about to get through those tough times? Well, I'll tell you about a couple of them. Um, 
And this is where the woo-woo part's gonna <laughs> gonna kick in. Okay. All right. So uh, one of them was I already actually kind of told you about the the uh, the health issue with the client. Right. That was a, that was a really low point for yeah. me. That sucked. Um, and then the other one was with a client that uh, we had a falling out. We had a disagreement. She didn't like the way um, my copy came out. And I'd been working with her for like six months. And she got really angry and wanted all of her money back from the past six months. Wow. And I'm like, no, I'm not doing that. But what happened was another marketer who had introduced us got involved in or tried to get involved in the middle and I ended up losing um, his friendship Ugh. because it, yeah, it was, it was really very painful and I was literally depressed about it for a year mm. and uh, I would like go to bed like holding, I have a little blankie, I would like, I would wake up in the morning like going, oh, it's still here, this horrible, like, I felt very deceived and it's still here like every day and it's, and so how did I got through it was a lot of it was time and, and then a lot of it was sort of woo woo things like like like, um, like praying and I do things like um, I do tarot, <laughs> read tarot cards and uh, crystals. I have all kinds of like crystal. You're very in touch with the woo woo. <laughs> I am. I really am. I'm very in, um, intuitive. Uh, I have. I don't really develop it. I'm certainly not like a psychic or anything, but I, I have Intuitive. connections. I have, I have my woo-woo antenna on. But that was that was really how, like saying affirmations and really focusing on the things that are good about me and that I that mm -hmm. I liked instead of being so wounded. And that that was how I got through that one. So how and, you, what kind of affirmations do you have? Um, I always like hearing if if you like, feel comfortable sharing uh, any of them. Person. Um, I am loved. I am uh, a great copywriter. I am confident. I am beautiful. I don't think that was one, but <laughs> I'm just thinking, you know, positive things. Yeah. Um, um, just those, yeah. I had a whole list of them. I actually have somewhere, I have a little CD that plays uh, the, the affirmations to me. I, I don't know where it is. <laughs> yeah. Because at the Titans, too, I, I think it was Gary Benzavinga who was saying, I don't remember if it was him, but from an early time before, like when he just started, he would have the affirmation. I think it was him. I may be misquoting, but I am a control beater. Like always thinking himself as the right. the top. And that sounds like, you know, you yeah. basically say those things to yourself. Yeah. And it really does shift your energy and shift your mood. When you start thinking like, I mean, you think about like verbally abused women or, or kids or men, even for that matter, just like, you suck, you're horrible. And you hear it enough and you and it starts playing a tape in your yeah. head. So why not make it a, a happy, uplifting tape? Yeah, yeah. I mean, because you say, yeah, time heals. But, but the reality is people can stay depressed for a long time. I mean, they could stay depressed for years. So... Right. That's right. why I ask how you got through it because it doesn't always end after a year or or however long. So you did some of those things to to kind of to get through it. Right, and and I'm a big believer in um, physical like exercise, and moving, and just you know the chemistry of your body changes when you when you exercise and you yeah. you know not to you don't have to kill yourself just walking or getting out and. And laughing, I love to dance. I'll, I'll even dance, you know, in my room, <laughs> and just movement. I think is a huge thing. In fact, that's another tip for for writing. Like if you get writer's block or you can't think of anything, just like get up and walk around to get into movement, into motion. Yeah, that is a is a really tough point. I mean, did you have uh, people in your life that help with it, or was it more internal stuff that that you just had to deal with? Oh, I did have people. Uh, my husband is is an amazing support for me, and he's he. You know, we we've had our ups and downs because of the, you know, the, the business ups and downs. And he he runs business a certain way, and I'm run it a different way. <laughs> so we'll butt heads, but he he uh, lifts me up, and he even when I don't feel so great myself, he'll tell me how amazing I am. And yeah. even still, we've been together. I've known him forever. I've known him since my son was eight months old, my youngest one. Wow. But we we didn't get married till 99, but he's been like my best friend. So he's he's been super helpful. Now my girlfriends, most of them 
I have two sets of girlfriends. I have like the the um, the veterans, I guess, and, they, and the, the ones who are in the business, yeah, and the civilians, if you will. Civilians. So the, the, the civilians have no clue what I do. I tried to explain it to them, but they they just don't get it. So I don't turn to them for that. But I I will talk to like I'll, I'll Allie Brown has been one of my my best friends and supporters of, of you know we we talk about she's had some of those things happen too and we'll talk about how people can be so mean to each other and wound each other and yeah. how we have to keep our head up and focus on the good yeah so how do you Lori? how do you avoid those things now i mean that was such a painful thing are there things that you do now because that you do because you want to avoid that same type of situation occurring or is that just a weird outlier no, no, it's it's. I think we get tested with that stuff all the time, and it, it was a huge growth spurt for me because I I don't, I just have firmer boundaries about things. I just don't put up with shit. <laughs> just, that's the way it is. And I was never. I was always a people pleaser, and that was one of my biggest um, Achilles heels. That was why I, that situation happened was because I was a people pleaser, and I wanted everyone to like me, and it was. It, it was at my cost. Yeah. And when I realized that, then I just, it, it's a lot easier to stand up for yourself when you realize that you're, you're basically, if it's, if it's not hell yes, it's hell no. And that's from, it's a Esther, what is it? Who are they? Esther Hicks. At Abraham Hicks quote, if it's not hell yes, it's hell no. So it's, if, if I don't, if I get a, a charge of something that this, this might be too much, then yeah. I'll say no more than I say yes. I actually do say no more than I say yes. Yeah, well, I'm glad you said yes to this interview. But, I am too. Um, so what about a proud – I mean now that I've depressed you with talking about the low point for a while, <laughs> what, what's been a proud moment or accomplishment? Well, I have to say you know, kind of creating this business from nothing yeah. is – that makes me really happy because I've known – around the world you know even if people don't know Lori Morgan Ferrero they know Red Hot Copy For like sure. I wasn't at I wasn't at Titans but a lot of my friends were and like my Aussie friends right like, yeah they would talk about about uh, me and people would be like Lori and then they'd say Red Hot Copy and they'd go oh yeah Red Hot Copy so I've, I've built a global presence and I'm extremely proud of that so even though I wasn't an actress a famous actress <laughs> I'm now like you know, I, I'm I have a global platform. So Famous there, copywriter. Yeah, take that acting. <laughs> I love that. Um, and then you have another very proud accomplishment, which is more personal. I do, I do. My sons. I mean, they're the reason I started this business to begin with. Yeah. And they both graduated college this this year. Oh wow. Yeah, yeah. They both did. Um, they had one took four years, one took five years. Totally fine. I don't care. And. Um, the sad thing is their father passed away Oy. like a, a couple months before oh, they graduated. Sorry that was, to hear that. It's... It, it was, um, it, it took my legs right out from under me. It hit me so hard. I couldn't work oh. for like four months. And he missed their graduation, oh. you know, but, but he knew and he was so proud of them. Like me too. We stayed very close even though we were divorced. Um, we would do holidays together, dinners together, oh. and... Just like everything, you know, like their birthdays. Yeah. I mean, we actually children went on. want their dad, so yeah. Well, yeah, exactly. And even though they have their stepfather, it's there. He's just he's left a huge hole in our lives, well. and so that's. And I mention it really, you know, not to to bum everybody out, but yeah. I think a lot of people do go through losses, and they don't really. This is the biggest one I've ever had that's hit me so hard, and I, I think people don't realize how very real that that um, yeah. devastation yeah. can be. And like trying to keep going on, I couldn't keep. I, I mean, thank God for my husband. Now, I, I was just kind of like, if I, I get out of bed every day, I just go like, well, one. If I could go to the grocery store, that'll be my one accomplishment for the yeah. day, or something like that. Um, How did they but, handle it? I mean, seeing you too, that probably is even harder on your your sons. Seeing you, you know, you would think. Yeah. You would think, but it's not. They're no. they're actually doing much better than I am. <laughs> but here's why: and you'll find that when your when your daughters go to college, if they do, maybe they'll be entrepreneurs, um, and and do something different. But once you graduate college, there's this like, what the hell do I do now? And that's where they're mm -hmm. at right now. So 
th- it's been a rough year for them. So they're like, one is going to probably go to law school and the other one is taking um, a post-production class. He's going to be in the entertainment industry behind the camera. Okay. So they're, they're doing so well. And I, I'm just so proud of them. They're not, you know, they're not into drugs. They're very responsible. They're funny as hell. They're, they're smart and they're good looking. <laughs> and they're just, I'm so like yesterday, it, no, the day before, I just went to the movies with my youngest son, and we just have such a great connection. Oh, you'll love this. My youngest son and I are going to be on a, a game show. A game show? It's a game show called Celebrity Name Game. We we film on Friday. So it's like charades to guess celebrity names, and you could win $20,000. Really? or yeah. how, do you, how did you qualify? Did you just have to try out or something? or I had to audition, and I have uh, a whole section of my brain devoted to pop culture that's completely unnecessary. It's just like ridiculous stuff. I can just pull stuff out of my butt <laughs> about just about any celebrity, or and I don't know why. I just have this this recognition of people. But anyway, when I found out that this was a thing, I'm like, oh, we live in Los Angeles. I'm going to find out how to get on. And they said, well, you have to have team member so I asked my son because he he's not doing anything really that's the reason why he doesn't have a job so we auditioned and and we rocked it and that's now awesome we're gonna be on. I'm gonna have so, to watch that what I'll, channel I'll let you on? know it's it's on channel five here okay. KTLA I, I okay. don't, I don't know. I'll give you the I'll give you the deets. yeah I want to see it um okay. so Lori who are some of your mentors and some <gasps> of the best advice um well you know, of course, Gary Halbert, Dan Kennedy. Uh, Dan was was hugely influential, even though I haven't spent a lot of time talking about him. John Carlton continues to be hugely influential mm-hmm. to me. And we're in in contact. We're in a little like a, a, a private secret a group, mastermind that, type of, and a mastermind, right? So so we're in touch a lot about business, and um, it's basically what they all have come down with is is kind of like. <laughs> I'm trying to not swear. I have a potty you mouth. You can swear if you want. <laughs> I <know. laughs> like I said I in the just, beginning. <laughs> I know. I know. All right. Well, just don't give a fuck about everything. Just try to be the best you. And, you know, people aren't thinking about everything that you're doing all the time. And stop letting other people control how you, you know, how you do things in your life. You take the skills that you've already developed, of course. You keep learning, of course. But you don't let other people mold and get into it get under your skin and change you to, to where you, you like start hiding. Mm-hmm, and so, mm-hmm. so I also have to, I have to give a shout out to Allie. My, my, she's my friend, but I've also hired her. I've given her lots of money to mentor me in the past yeah. too. And I mean, she's um, very well known as being one of the top female yeah. entrepreneurs. Yeah, exactly. For good reason. And she is highly emotional. I think I don't think she would mind me saying that. She she says to me one time she cries every day, and and um, one of the things is also is just to know that people are going to lash out mm-hmm. at you, and especially now, right, with the the internet and everyone's behind their secret keyboards and it makes they're, it they're, easier. You yeah, know, you don't have to take as much responsibility face to face for it. Yeah, it does. It does. And so it's just kind of. I think this is a, like a life lesson for me in general, but just to be get have a little tougher skin, to not worry about being so PC all the time, and just just lighten up and laugh. That's that's the be- laughter is the best medicine, I think. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And so I want to hear a little bit about what's a typical day for you. What are some daily rituals that you have? Well, let's see. Um, I cuddle with my husband in the morning. <laughs> That's for uh, an hour, then what? That's for the yeah, right. <laughs> um, my my perfect day is I, I take a, a a cardio class that's a version of Tybo, taught by Billy Blank's uh, sister. Sure, sure. That's so hard. It sounds you know it's not just like jumping around. It's hard as hell, and so I usually will take that a few days a week. So first uh, in the morning. Then I come home and I shower, and then I'm on the computer by 10. I have to look at TMZ. <laughs> You've got to train for your celebrity talk show. Yeah. Thank you. Yes. Exactly. Um, and uh, Facebook, you know, see what my emails are, see what's going on. And um, then I, I literally will sit down 
and oh, I have a smoothie. I have a green smoothie mm-hmm. every. What do you put morning. in it? Cucumber, beets, kale, ginger, celery, coconut water. Very healthy. Frozen, <laughs> frozen banana and frozen berries. Nice. Yeah, yeah, and it's it just it keeps me going through usually through lunch. And then I'll sit and write whatever it is that I'm working on at the time, you know, whether it's for a client. Like, I'll tell you right now, I have a client. I have my boot camp that's starting, but I just finished the promotion. So now, you know, we're transitioning into getting ready for the class. And if I'm teaching, of course, I'm, uh, we have a lot of in-between times that a lot of contacts. So I'll be checking emails and looking at the students' stuff. So, but let's just say I have a, a window, like a four-hour window uh, between 11 to 4 or 5 um, and I'll take a little break you know for for lunch but I just bring I eat lunch at my desk most of the time so that's my writing and that's that's my creation part um, what I'd like to do I'll confess yeah. is to be a little more um, to do that you know how you break up like this is this is admin day and then this is right, writing right. day and this is i I've, I've tried that before and i like it but right now i'm just kind of coasting on workout then write then dinner that kind of thing mm-hmm. yeah that's actually you know time and time again i ask my audience i go what what kind of questions do you want me to ask and they love this question they want to know how a successful entrepreneur, what their their day breaks down. I just saw an infographic uh, breaking this down of top CEOs and what they do, like starting from when they wake up till they go to bed. So, you know, uh, I love hearing even yeah. the, the details of what you put in your smoothie. So uh, <laughs> I have one last question for you, Laura, and I really appreciate your time. Uh, before I ask it, I want you to tell people where they can find you, what do you have coming up that's new and exciting, what, what should they check out? Okay, well... My site is redhotcopy.com, and um, you can also look me up on, on Facebook, of course. It, it's Red Hot Copy Fan mm-hmm. is the fan page, although Facebook has screwed up the fan pages, haven't they? <laughs> really? I, I don't know. I haven't no? noticed. Uh, well, I, I feel like I get a lot. They restrict who's going to see. Oh, how, yes, yes. Yeah, I, yeah yes. so mm-hmm. it, like 30 people They only see, see like a, a small portion. Yeah. Yes, yeah. Yes. So you can just you can also look for me at just Red Hot Copy. That's cool too. Okay. That's where I, I my regular page is where I tend to connect more, which is counterintuitive, but that's what I do. And what I'm really excited about is this book that I've been writing for the longest time mm-hmm. about marketing to women called She is the New We. And um hoping to is have it that. out yet or no it's 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 like 95 percent mm-hmm. written i just need to go through and you know just brush it up and that's i'm gonna just put it through create space and amazon and and have that and i'm real excited because it's i've literally been Do you have writing. a cover picked out yeah. or yeah, yeah okay yeah. It's, it's did you write this title last or first last. last i had a different title what was the, the other one the original title was um the she factor marketing system which is the the live event that i did right and then when i started doing my last boot camp um actually a dan Safkow. i don't know if you know dan but he no. does he's he kind of came up with that title of she is the new we and i was like oh, that's it because it's it's not just about her it's it's much more global with you know both genders and it, like we're all getting more feminized. Deal with it. <laughs> <laughs> is that the subhead, the subtitle? That We're is all now. getting more. Fe- I just made it. <laughs> yes. I love it. You're part of history. Thanks. All right. So I'll have to link that up. I mean, eventually when uh, when it comes out, but we'll yeah. definitely link up all the all the sites at Red Hot Copy. Um, Super cool. Where else? What else? Anything else uh, before I I have yeah. my yeah. The, this storytelling bit, the, I'm super so proud of that because it's just gotten a lot of great feedback. Uh, the storytelling challenge, and then of course I have the product on storytelling, and uh, eventually we're going to put this all under like an umbrella site and have a place where people can can connect and share their own stories and stuff. Yeah. So that's because you can find a lot. Of, the red hot copy you can find. I mean, when I was looking at, it, you can find a number of your products and things under yeah. under there. There are. Right. There's a, there's the conscious copywriting formula, which is yeah. also like a thing, and and the boot camp 
if you don't make it for a live one that I usually Where are they? Are they in LA? They're virtual. Virtual. Oh, they're live. virtual. Oh, okay. Yeah. So they're uh, they're eight weeks, but if you if you can't make it for a live one, there's the do it yourself. You can. It's very easy to follow. So yeah, there's there's several products in there. Uh, the boot camp's my favorite. Teaching live is my favorite, and um, the storytelling is is a is fast approaching my my favorites as well. Nice. That's fun. So, Laura, my last question has to do with one of your proudest moments, which is your kids. Oh. And I'm just wondering, because, you know, you've been through this journey. It's not an easy journey. There's ups and downs. What do you tell them? What do you teach your kids about business and entrepreneurship? And what have they kind of learned from you as they kind of almost start this path? Mm-hmm. Well, they are so not entrepreneurially driven. And I had to, I had to accept that. They, uh, they both want, oh, that's not true. That's not true. My oldest one, the one who's going into the entertainment industry, actually is. He does... Um, um, sculptures and weapons and stuff like that, like weapons. costumes, cost anime, you know, costumes. Oh yeah, yeah, stuff. yeah. Okay. Yeah, so he does commissions, is what he calls them. He does commissions, and so um, he actually went through with a client recently uh, on the side, and he talked to me a lot about like how to how does he handle it right. and he didn't take a lot of my advice i'm like you should get it in writing exactly what it is that you're giving him and he's ah i don't want to do that but now that it turns out that that his client ended up like um piling work on him you know like the the project scope and he i said well you've got to ask him for more money or tell him you can't do it yeah. and so he he actually asked the guy for d- double what he originally had proposed and the guy gave it to him so that was i was so proud of him for that that's great like, yeah and that's early on so he's now he knows ahead of time to you know kind of look at how much potential time it is and to charge mm. a- accordingly and to write stuff down so there's no confusion yeah. So what other advice did you give him? You told them, get it in writing. What else was important? Get it in writing. Um, go back to school. <laughs> what else did I tell him? On? There were other other issues. I don't know. You, you caught me off guard on that one. I just, I know that it was a really bumpy road for him. Yeah. And it was his first dealing with like an actual paying client who was also a friend. Mm. And it's so complicated I, a little bit. Yeah. It, yeah, it was a little. It was complicated for sure. Yeah. Um, and then the other one is uh, the one who's going to law school. He's not particularly entrepreneurial, but he is a musician, and so it, it's. You know, I'm trying to get him to to start up a, a Facebook page for his band, and to to get out there and do he do gigs, which he is. I don't think that's because of me, but he is starting to do them, and just you know, like he needs to have. His band name down for the celebrity name game. Well, you're gonna have to right? come up with it. What is what is his band name? Have you ever played Cards Against Humanity? Have you ever heard of yes, that? Yes, yes. We, we come up with lots of band names through there, but we don't use them like Windmill of Corpses. Because you're the perfect person to come up with that stuff. You could probably whip out a good name of a of a band in no time. Um, I believe it's going to be Oliver Oxenfree. That's the uh, like, that's where he's leaning towards. Okay. It's, yeah, it's, it's, you know, quirky band things. He's like, who, ha- who really has a good band name that you can think of? And it, it was kind of hard to think like, well, I don't know. Led Zeppelin was a good one. Beatles is famous. The Beatles know. actually is good because I didn't realize that Beatles, until he pointed it out, duh, I'm a copywriter, that Beatles is B-E-A-T versus the, ro- the bug, right? Yeah, yeah. I just... He I, told you that this year. Oh, so you didn't know either. No, no. See? Yeah, I was not paying attention. <laughs> I wasn't either. So yeah, it, it was it was pretty good. Lori, this has been fantastic. I just want to be the first one to thank you. Everyone should check out Red Hot Copy, and you know, thank you so much. I appreciate it. It was so fun, Jeremy. I had I loved hanging out with you. Take care. Thank Thanks. you so much. All right. Bye.